I'd like to do an overview of Backup Exec 21. And I've been using it now for about a week, testing it all out. And just want to go over some of the changes as well as some of the basic functions. So when you first open up Backup Exec 21 and other versions of Backup Exec as well, you are presented with this home page. Now, typically, we don't spend a lot of time in the home page. It just gives you some information. We can see my trial is down to 49 days. My trial started at 60 days. And we can see information such as alerts, uh, backup sizes and things like that. But typically most people don't use that, so they go right into where it says backup and restore and see how their backup jobs are doing. And here's a list of my four different backup servers, including the backup exec server itself, which is running on file server one. And from here, I can create a scheduled backup by clicking backup to disk or cloud. So I can connect to Azure or AWS. And I can also uh, create a virtual machine by converting a backup to a virtual machine and then pushing it out to a Hyper-V or a VMware server. I can also create a synthetic backup of which we cover in one of the videos. And we can create a new backup using settings from an existing backup, which saves some time so you don't have to set up everything all over again. If you double click on any of the servers, for instance, you can see the backup jobs that have run as well as any restore jobs. Here we see a test run as well as a file restore done in another video. And if we click on job monitor, this gives us an idea, especially the bottom section, of what's happened over the last week or so. We can see the successes and the canceled and the failed jobs. And you can double click on any of those jobs. And it brings up the job log and job history and explains why it is that you had an issue. And a lot of times it sends you to a particular location so you can possibly resolve the issue as well. Sometimes there'll be a link in the log that will send you to where you can try that out. Now, you also have the option to save the log files or print them as well. Under the storage, you see that I have added in Azure storage. I've added in cloud storage, which was shown on how to do in a previous video in this playlist. I also added in disk storages, two devices, as well as a storage pool made up of those two devices. And then we learned how to edit the storage so that you could go in and make changes to the defaults, such as how many backups you can run at one time, which by default is going to be just two. And we can add additional ones here. There's also a reporting area. Now, I didn't set up any reports because most people don't seem to need the reports since the job logs pretty much tell you everything that you need to know. But reports are really good for C-level type people, people who are not technical. They can see at a glance uh, how jobs have been doing over a long period of time. So you can click to create a scheduled report and then select that information and go ahead and turn that in to whoever needs it. So we click on New Custom Report, for instance and we can run through the wizard until we get reports created. The Instant Cloud Recovery is a really interesting feature, and it came out in uh, one of the later versions of Backup Exec 20, and is, of course, available in 21 as well. And what it allows you to do is to recover a backup and push it out to Azure and have it start running on Azure as a virtual machine. So not only can we connect to storage in the cloud, such as Azure and AWS, but we can also connect using virtual machines and virtual machine servers at Azure. Some of the new features that come with Backup Exec 21 include two-factor authentication, which is an option. It's not something that you can see is set up by default. I was able to just launch Backup Exec without any issues. It also has better ransomware resiliency, although I don't see a lot of explanation as to how it has better resiliency to being encrypted. It has better deduplication. It's actually more secure than it was because of a new hashing algorithm. And it does support new platforms such as Red Hat Enterprise as well as Windows Server 2019, Oracle, and other versions of Linux. Overall, in my opinion, this is a good solid upgrade, and I think that you'll get a lot of use out of Backup Exec 21, especially if you utilize the cloud services that you can connect to and use as an off-site backup if you decide you want to use that. I don't recommend you use cloud backup as your primary backup because it's too slow. 
unless you have a gigabit connection in both directions, which tends to get throttled by Azure anyway. I, t I recommend that you use your on-site or your on-premises backup device and just use the cloud as a secondary device in case you need it. And it'll make restores go much faster as well. So that's an overview of Backup Exec 21 by an independent consultant.